the modern civil rights movement. This period of hard struggle has left one of the biggest influences and legacies in all of U.S. history. One of the most influential people during that time, who was also the faith of the civil rights movement, was Martin Luther King Jr. But many do not know the others with him, and they also don't know how big a part they played in getting the civil rights movement in the place it is today in our history. One of the biggest organizations of the time to work who supported and followed Martin Luther King Jr. were the SCLC, and coincidentally, their president was Martin Luther King Jr. The SCLC stands for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. This was a nationwide organization created by protesters and boycotters of the U.S. and they wanted this. Their goal was to stop segregation, and that is what legacy they left behind. This is the life and legacy of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The very beginnings of the SCLC can be traced back to the Montgomery Bus Boycott. The bus boycott began on December 5, 1955 after Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her seat to a white man on the bus. The boycott was carried out by the newly established Montgomery Improvement Association or the MIA. So the boycott was also a signal to the black America to begin a new phase as a long struggle. A phase that became to be known as the modern civil rights movement. Bus boycotts spread across the South. Leaders of the MIA, including Martin Luther King Jr., the president of the MIA, and other protest groups met in Atlanta on January 10th through 11th of 1957 to form a regional organization and coordinate protest activities across the South, which led to the creation of the SCLC. During this time, an issue had occurred where Ralph David Abernathy, who had served as the program director of the MIA and who was also at the meeting, house, was, house and church were bombed. This did not stop, though, the creation of the SCLC, where they still had created it and assembled a, ish, a creation of the Southern Leadership Conference. The 60 persons in 10 states which assembled the first order of business was they issued a document declaring the civil rights as essential to the democracy and the segregation must end, and that all black people should reject segregation absolutely and nonviolently. Further organizing was done at a meeting in New Orleans on February 14, 1957. They shortened their name to the Southern Leadership Conference and established an executive board of directors. That had Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as president, Ralph David Abernathy as financial secretary treasurer, Reverend C.K. Steele of Florida as vice president, Reverend T.J. Jemison of Baton Rouge, Louisiana as secretary, and attorney I. M. Augustine of New Orleans as general counsel. They had tried earlier to campaign themselves, but then their campaign had drastically failed. But that all changed one day in Birmingham in 1963, where children between the ages of 12 and 18 marched trying to reach half a mile, and they were brutally tortured by hoses and dogs. If they tried to escape, there was dogs just waiting for them. And this message, this led a message to America, which was the campaign boost they needed for people to support them and start issuing segregation. This also led to desegregation in Birmingham as well. The March had such a big campaign boost for the SCLC that that same year they led the legendary March on Washington with Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, on August 28, 1963, 250,000 people marched in Washington, D.C. to the Lincoln Memorial to demand equal justice for all Americans. People would have expected all black people to be there, but 
it was a mix of black and white, hand in hand, together, walking for one major goal of equality and justice. People in Washington, D.C. were scared, expecting something really violent to happen, but to their shock, this was a peaceful march. On the steps of Lincoln Memorial, Martin Luther King Jr. had also said his memorable and most influential, I have a dream speech. This event on its own could have left one of the biggest legacies for any person who had contributed to this event. But the SCLC had gone 10 steps ahead after this. They had contributed in almost every single protest and movement for civil rights movement. This by far was the biggest protest and movement for the, the entire country. No one expected this big of an outcome from both blacks and whites together for equality in jobs, equality in America, together as one country united. Ever since the march in Washington, the SCLC had gained a huge following of both blacks and whites in America. In 1965, the SCLC had launched a major campaign to register black voters. And that same year, Congress had passed a new Voting Rights Act. But a big part of it was the reason, response, and what the SCLC had done in Selma, Alabama. But that same year, King had attempted to register 400 black voters in the city, and many were arrested by the police. King had noted that there were more blacks in Selma's jails than they were actually registered to vote. The same year, the SCLC and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or the SNCC, had organized a 50-mile march from Selma to Montgomery. Shortly into the march, the marchers were attacked by the state troopers. This prompted even more demonstrators to join the, those already on the march. An issue had occurred during the march where the Student non Nonviolent Coordinating Committee had split from the SCLC because of some issues they had between the King and the organization itself. But uh, this had reached a radical stage of change in segregation as well. Because it showed how tortured people were being during the time of hard struggles and all. The next few years until 1968, the SCLC turned their attention to address the poverty and uh, that was found in many inner city ghettos where a lot of black people lived. The SCLC was concerned with the violence and spiraling out of control. They blamed poverty for the root cause of it, this. However, a major setback in history was the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in April 1968. To many, Martin Luther King Jr. was the SCLC, and they had no idea about what legacy the SCLC had left alongside what they did with Martin Luther King Jr. Though he was being the president, the whole group itself had played a big contribution in the civil rights movement. The SCLC's long-lasting legacy is still alive today in the matters of school issues, teenager problems, and other racial issues as well. They have been doing marches and other events as large as that as well. They have kept themselves alive since the time of Martin Luther King Jr. and have left a big, a huge impact and legacy in racial and segregation.